कुछ तो झूठ चांद ने भी बोला होगा यू ही नहीं रूट कर तारे टूट जाया करते हैं हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक आ गए एक और सीरीज के साथ वेर आर बी आंसरिंग फ्यू ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दर आई गॉट ऑन माई चैनल तो एक एक करके शुरू करते हैं सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट हाई हाउ इम्पॉर्टेंट द डिसीजन ऑफ एन एडमिशन कमिटी इज सी अल्टीमेटली द डिसीजन ऑफ योर एडमिशन इन टू यूनिवर्सिटी इज टेकन बाय द एडमिशन कमिटी बट द प्रोफेसर डू हैव अ से इन दैट सेलेक्शन प्रोसीजर द रीजन वी सेंड ई मेल टू द प्रोफेसर बिफोर अपलाइंग टू द यूनिवर्सिटी इज फर्स्ट टू गेट एन आइडिया वेदर अ पोजिशन इज एक्चुअली अवेलेबल अंडर दैट प्रोफेसर नॉट बिकॉज इफ देर इज नो पोजिशन इट डजेंट मेक एनी सेंस टू अपलाई इन दैट यूनिवर्सिटी specifically under that professor as a phd second reason is it helps us to project ourselves into the eyes of the professor to let them know that this student is trying to apply for a phd in that particular specific that whatever the field is and uh, this also allows us to show our profile to the professor so that if in case they like your profile what they can do is they can insist you know talk to the admission committee to select you as a phd candidate because they have already screened out your resume screened out your profile and they know that this is a capable candidate and can be taken for the position that is open under him that's why we send mails before uh, applying to the university second question what's about what is the right time to start emailing the professors for example if you are aiming for fall, fall next year i would say September is a perfect time to start mailing the professors you get pretty good amount of time to have a conversation with the professor and figure out where to apply and where to not so i would say any time before 7 to 6 to 7 months before the start of the session be it a spring session or your fall session third question was about uh, my overall experience as a phd candidate i would say it's okay and out of 10 if i rated it, it's somewhere around 7.5 or 8 because i like it i like doing research and uh, part of the reason is that i'm pretty good in managing my time because i'm so far i've been able to manage my research work my academics my courses my assignments and my extracurricular things my youtube thing for sure so i've been able to manage it and depends on how good you are managing your time if you are good at it you'll enjoy it otherwise it's going to be miserable uh, right for you because uh, it is stressful it's not very happy journey here but you do get time to enjoy and i would say if you are good at managing time you can enjoy phd also fourth was about green card so one of the way of getting a green card is marrying a american citizen here but in that also the rules have been revised now so if you are marrying a american citizen you get a green card for 2 years and then later they do the extension for 10 years something like that so i'm not fully aware of it but you'll you'll need to check that the second method if you are a phd candidate and you want to get a green card is uh, via eb categories visa so there are two categories eb 1a and eb 1b for you to apply in these categories you need to have a, an excellent research you should have a research profile that have made a significant impact in your particular field you should have very good publications you should have awards in your name when you have this kind of a profile then you can apply to this eb category visa believe me it's not very easy to get you you need to give a lot of documentation before applying to this eb eb visa but this is one of the way you can get a green card it kind of uh, make the process of getting a green card easy for a phd candidate if you are getting a eb visa but the only requirement is you need to be excellent in your research in credible work in your research field and only and only then you can apply for eb visa and then in your chances of getting selected for the eb visa increases research should be excellent fifth question is about opt optional practical training if you are an f1 visa holder that means you are a student and you are here for your masters and phd once you are done with your masters or phd whatever program it is optional practical training allows you to stay for another 2 years provided you are getting a job in your major field and it doesn't work if you are getting a job in a store as a worker and then you are applying for opt no it doesn't work like that you have to get a job in your major field and if you are getting a job in that then only you can apply for opt and you get an extension for 24 months for more details you can check uscis.gov website the link is in the description just click it and you'll know more about opt and how to apply for it there are two options pre opt post completion opt so you can explore that area also sixth question was interesting about saturday and sunday see most of the people here including professors they respect your time your free time so saturday and sunday you don't get mails you don't get text about do this do that but there are few professors who will ask you to do work on saturday and sunday it depends on what kind of an advisor you are getting here in in your phd but in general people do respect your time and saturday and sunday are off but not all the time because you are an student you have to manage 
your research your assignments your course projects and also mostly you'll you'll be spending your saturday and sunday doing these things but there are going to be your weekends where you will be enjoying it going out going on trips hanging out with your friends going for clubs and whatnot i mean you have multiple options here definitely now the seventh thing important one i got a message on instagram and the doubt was if i come here as a student can i get a job in some shop and all or restaurant as a waiter and start working here and start earning here and then use that money to pay your tuition fees your room rent your groceries and everything it doesn't work like that because if you are coming here on f1 visa you cannot work anywhere else the only job you can take is first a campus job probably in a mess or a library second is if you are getting a ra position under any professor that's more like my situation here because as a phd i am also in ra so if you are in masters and you are getting a ra position then also you are allowed to do that that's a huge benefit for a master student why because your tuition fees get reduced by 50% so 50% is already paid off uh, from the funding because professor is is hiring you as an ra and you also get a stipend and you can use that stipend to pay your tuition fees and your groceries and your room rent and little bit extra in your shoppings and all so don't think like this you, you'll come to us you start doing job here and then earn money here and then pay off everything no that, that doesn't work like that and you're not allowed to do that and the other thing is dur ke dhol suhane grass is always greener on the other side sirf us mein aana doesn't guarantee you a success agar aisa hota to india mein koi successful ho hi nahi raha hota ya aapke home country mein koi successful nahi ho raha hota and second is 1 dollar ko 80 se ya 85 se multiply karke inr mein convert karke khush hona band kar do because you actually are not considering the expenses that you have to do After coming here, room rent is your. It's it's going to cost you around five hundred, six hundred dollars. Then you have uh, your uh, health insurance. And then you have your grocery bills. You have utility bills and a lot of things. So you have a lot to manage here. So there are a lot of things that people are not aware of, and they just convert. Okay, I'm getting five hundred dollars here as a payment, and then five hundred into eighty. I'm getting forty thousand. This is too much. No, it's not. That's it, guys. That's all for today's video. See you in the next video where we'll be discussing about few more interesting things. Till then, bye bye.